Hello, welcome back to Halo Fleet Battles Week on Fleet Signal. My name is Alex, and today I'm going to take a closer look at the UNSC fleet from the Fall of Reach starter set. We'll take a closer look at each of the ships and their stats and abilities and so on, and we'll also lightly touch on, on fleet building in passing. We'll also take a look at the commander card, Michael Stanforth. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so let's begin with the UNSC Epoch Heavy Carrier. So as you can see, we've got a supported version and an unsupported version, and the stats are slightly different depending on which one you decide to take. So both versions have a movement of six inches. So this isn't the fastest ship that you'll see in the um, in the UNSC fleet. And the damage track for the supported version is 1085, whereas for the unsupported version is 985. However, the supported um, element costs 190 points, whereas the unsupported element costs 175 points. So it all depends on how you, you know, how you're able to fit the ship into your into your fleet. Um, the build rating also impacts on that as well, because the build rating for the supported is 5, whereas unsupported is 4. Now in Halo Fleet Battles, each, um, each, each battle group, which consists of a number of elements, basically bases, um, each build rating can be no, no higher for each battle group than 6. So with a build rating of 5, you can maybe take some Paris-class frigates, or you know, with a build rating of 4, you can maybe take a couple of Paris-class frigates. And actually, um, you have to take a capital and a non-capital ship in each battle group. So building, a, you know, if you're taking um, you know, a supported epi Epoch Carry Carrier, then you'd have to take the Paris-class frigates um, in, you know, in the battle group, or another, you know, another non-capital element. But in the starter set, it would have to be the frigates. So moving on, we can see that it's got six hangars which means that you can put six, um, basically six tokens worth of fighter, you know, fighter craft onto the ship. Now in Halo, smaller craft are represented by tokens such as these ones. Here you can see that we've got um, a couple of interceptors and a bomber that we're actually going to talk about a bit later on. But suffice to say for now, um, the hangar's rating means that you can take up to six um, flight slots worth of tokens, I should say, onto, um, onto this ship. Now. Not every flight token is worth one flight slot. Some are worth two. So, you know, you might not be able to take as many ships as you think you can um, until you, you, know, you get used to, you know, making, making new and SC fleets. Okay, boarding craft and security detail. We're not going to go into too much detail, no pun intended, about um, in this video. But suffice to say, boarding craft is the amount of pelicans that you can chuck, literally fire, at an enemy ship. Uh, you know, they'll be initially on board this ship, so you can have up to three pelicans on board this ship. And security detail is, you know, all about, basically all about what those, um, you know, what, what your Spartans or whatever do once they get onto an enemy ship. Okay, moving on to system loadouts, we've got carrier action three, which is really useful actually if you are taking wings and using wings, and you should be using wings, um, because um, this lets you literally replenish wings when they are destroyed. So basically, whenever something is destroyed in, in um, Halo Fleet Battles, it goes to the scrapyard. It's a, that's actually like a game zone um, in the game called the scrapyard. And so if your wings are destroyed and go to the scrapyard, then each turn you can replenish up to three of those wings, because it's carrier action three, you can replenish up to three wings that were destroyed and add them back to the battlefield, put them back into wings that are you know in action on the battlefield. Um, hard burn one inch. Simply means that if you want to um, if you want to move in a straight line, you can add an extra one inch to that movement. So you can't turn if you do a hard burn, but if you just want to get somewhere fast and you're going in a straight line, you can add an extra inch and move seven inches instead of six inches. Missile barrage works with the missile batteries, so I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, point defense and titanium armor are interesting because in in Halo in Halo fleet battles. The defense role has been taken from the. Um, it's been taken away from being like a you know like a regular stat, like you might see shields in Firestorm Armada or something like that. You know, um, it's been taken away from that, and it's been added into the loadouts. Now the loadouts are essentially they're kind of like Mars, if you're familiar with Firestorm. Um, they're not exactly like Mars, but they're kind of sort of going in that direction. And it's interesting that the defense role has been kind of modularized into the loadouts. So point defense six, um, point defense defends against um, boarding craft, against bombers, and also against missiles. 
So you add that to your defense pool. So point defense six means you add six dice to your defense pool when you're rolling against any of those types of, you know, of those threats. Um, whereas titanium armor can be added to, you know, th any kind of threat. So whatever, you, you know, whatever's shooting at you, as long as you've got titanium armor up, then you can add five dice here, because it's titanium armor five. You can add five dice to your defense pool. However, if you're if you know if the enemy has managed to do the first point of damage against this ship, so if they've you know managed to get ten successes and they've knocked out the first point of damage, then your titanium armor disappears, it cracks, and you can't use that titanium armor anymore on that ship. So you know once you've managed to crack through your NSC ship, then you know it becomes less able to defend itself and slightly easier to you know to take down. Okay, now let's move on to the weapons. Um, here we've got a light mac for primary weapon and missile batteries for secondary weapon. And just another quick note here, if you, if you are familiar with Firestorm Armada, you don't have to fire primary first and then secondary second in Halo. You can fire the missile batteries first if you want to and then follow up with a light mac. So if you, you, know, if you do play Firestorm, don't think of it as you know, primary first, secondary second, because it doesn't work like that in Halo. So the light mac, which is um, magnetic accelerator cannon, has a range of 10 inches at short range, 20 inches at long range. Um, short and long range does affect the firepower rating depending on the weapon. Um, but with max, there's no there's no effect on firepower rating. Um, the weapon loadout is Mac, of course, and it has a one. The one is the Mac rating for this particular Mac. So um, what you do is, if for example you're firing with multiple elements which all have different you know, MAC ratings or even the same MAC rating, you would add up the ratings of all the MAC participating in the attack. And then that might enable you to put vulnerable tokens onto the enemy ship, and vulnerable tokens um, decrease the damage track of that ship by one per, you know, per number. So for example, if the Epoch had you know, a vulnerable token on it, then the damage track would go from 1085 in the supportive version down to 974. So vulnerable tokens make it easier to take out ships and you know this represents you know the MAC rating represents um, the UNSC's kind of strategy of you know wearing down ships you know gradually and you know eventually being able to destroy them. Um, all MACs always fire in the fore arc. Um, they're always mounted on the front of the ship and in the supported um, formation you can throw, you know, it'll throw 12 dice against an enemy, whereas unsupported, it will throw 10 dice. And I should also mention, actually, that the, um, the defenses of the unsupported heavy carrier are actually different as well. So instead of 6-5, we've got 5 and 4 for point defense and titanium armor, respectively. Okay, moving on to the secondary weapon, we've got missile batteries, um, which have a range of 12 inches at short range, 24 inches at long range. Um, this actually matters because if we look at the firepower effect table, um, this is basically this is you know a really important part of the game, and it always starts at four. However, missiles, UNSC missiles, give plus one at long range on firepower effect. So instead of a four, it goes up to a five. Now there are other effects that could take the you know, the firepower rating down again, um, but as a base kind of as a base statistic, you know UNSC missiles at long range, so basically further than being fired further than twelve inches. Um, do do make the firepower rating go up from four to five. So UNSC missiles are more effective at long range. They're more likely to do damage at long range. So we, here we see we've got weapons loadout, missiles, and the arc is either four arc with missile barrage because the star and the star there represents missile barrage, or we've got port and starboard. So you can either fire on the port and the starboard arcs depending on you know whether or not you've got targets to actually fire on in those arcs, or you can fire just one attack at the closest enemy element in the fore arc, which is what missile barrage um, you know, represents. And you get 15 dice, or I should say this element contributes 15 dice to a missile battery attack if you're doing that. Because for example, the, um, the Paris frigates also have missile batteries, and each element of Paris frigates adds two dice to your, to your attack pool. So if you're firing with both the frigates, which have two, and the you know say a supported epoch which has 15 then you'd throw if you're combining them you'd throw 17 dice at the enemy ship not literally at the ship but you know as an attack roll against that ship um so the unsupported epoch heavy carrier only has 10 dice on the light mac and only has 12 dice on the missile batteries 
So again, it's a cheaper ship to take in your fleet, but it's slightly, you know, slightly worse, I suppose you could say. So you have to kind of, you know, make those compromises and, you know, take that into account when you're, you know, when you're fleet building. Okay, now let's take a look at the Marathon Heavy Cruiser. So the supported Marathon costs 110 points, whereas an unsupported Marathon costs 95 points. It's a capital ship, it's a medium. Um, in, in Halo, the ship sizes go small, medium, large, and massive. So this is a medium ship. Um, the movement for both um, types, you know, for both variants of this element is eight inches. So it is faster than an Epoch. And the damage track for supported is 763, whereas for unsupported, it's 663. So once again, taking the supported version um, costs more points, but it is slightly harder to take down. The build rating for the supported um, Marathon is 3, whereas for unsupported it's 2. So again, that'll affect how your battle groups come together. And the hangars um, for each are 2, boarding craft for each are 2, and security detail rating is 4 for the supported Marathon, but 3 for the unsupported Marathon. So, on the system loadouts, we've they've both got hard burn 2 inches, so they can both go 10 inches as long, you know, in a straight line, as long as you are going in that straight line. Um, they both have missile barrage as well. The point defense for the supported marathon is four, and for the unsupported is also four. But the uh, titanium armor for supported is four, whereas the, mar the unsupported marathon only has three titanium armor. Okay, now moving on to the weapons. Um, the primary weapon is a heavy mac, whereas the secondary weapon is missile batteries on both versions of the marathon here. Um, you might expect the, the Epoch to have a heavy Mac and the Marathon to have a light Mac, but not so. The Marathon has the heavy Mac, which has a range of 16 inches at short, 32 inches at long, so longer range than the Epoch's Mac, and it also has a weapon loadout of Mac 2. Well, the Mac rating is 2. So being able to combine lots of Marathons into one attack, you know, like I should say lots of Macs on, you know, on, on the Marathons into one attack can potentially be quite devastating. Um, the arc is for arc, of course, it's a Mac, and it contributes when you know, each element, each supported element contributes 10 dice, whereas each unsupported element contributes 8 dice to an attack roll. Okay, moving on to the secondary weapon, we've got missile batteries at 12 and 24, at short and long range, respectively. Um, they're missiles, of course, um, and they've also got the point barrage, just like, sorry, the missile barrage, just like the uh, Epoch. So you can either fire one attack at the closest enemy element from in the fore arc, or you can make port and starboard attacks on the sides. And um, the unsupported, sorry, the supported contributes eight dice. The unsupported contributes seven dice on a missile battery attack. Okay, now let's move on to the Paris class frigates, which we can see here in both arrowhead formation and in trident formation. Now the formation does affect how the weapons work in each type of formation, on each element base. So, both of these formations have 10 inches of movement, so they're fast. Um, they have a damage track of 333 in Arrowhead and 433 in Trident, and they each have a build rating of 1. So they're fairly easy to add to you know, other battle groups um, that you might be you know, putting together. Um, the hangers on each are zero, the hangar ratings are zero, um, boarding craft is zero as well, these guys don't have hangars or boarding craft, and security detail is only one. Now for system loadouts we've got elusive, um, elusive is a, is a loadout, a rule that basically says that if you're firing against a ship with elusive then the firepower rating of that attack goes down by one, however if the attacking ship is also elusive then you know elusive doesn't matter, it goes, it kind of goes away for that attack. Um, hard burn three inches means that you know these guys can go 13 inches in a straight line as long as they don't turn. And just like the other ships, missile barrage um, you know is you know connects to missile batteries, so they can you know, they can fire one you know powerful missile attack in the four arc. Um, the point defense is two, and titanium armor is also two for each type of formation. So you know they're not. They don't throw too much in the defense role, but you know they can still defend themselves. Although, like the other ships, when titanium armor goes down, then it's pretty easy to you know wipe out these guys. Okay, moving on to weapons. Um, each type has light mac and missile batteries. Um, the ranges are the same on both: ten and twenty for light mac, and twelve and twenty-four for the missile batteries. 
Um, the Mac is rating 1, it's a light Mac. So the weapon loadout is Mac 1, and the Fort Ent fires in the 4 arc. Of course, because it's a Mac. And each element will contribute 4 dice. Now, this doesn't seem like a lot, but when you think of how cheap the build rating is on these guys, you know, if you add two of these to an element, and you know, the whole battle group fires max, then you know, two elements of Paris class frigates, at least in arrowhead formation, um, they'll be able to you know contribute four dice. So you know, two two arrowhead formation bases will contribute eight max dice, you know, eight dice to an attack. You know, if you're attacking with max, which isn't insignificant in this game. So you know, it doesn't look like much, but it can actually add up, given how cheap the bases are to add two battle groups. Um, on the arrowhead formation, the missile batteries are, of course, classed as missiles. They can fire one attack in the fore arc, or you know, they can attack in port and starboard. And they have two, a contribute two dice um, to any missile attacks, which again can, you know, can add up. However, if you're firing, if you're using a trident formation um, Paris frigate base, then the missile batteries go up to three dice, whereas the Mac cannons go down, go down to three dice. So it depends on your style and you know how you want to build your fleet. Um, if you want to you know go more with Max and if that's more your style, then you can you know take the arrowhead formation. Whereas if you're more comfortable with missiles, if you know if firing missiles is more your style, then you can take more tridents and you know take advantage of the extra dice on you know on the trident formation. So the formation, you know the way the, the you know basically the way the ships are on the base affects how you know how the weapons work. In each type of formation, so you know that's for you to decide. You know how you're going to build your battle groups when you're actually putting together your fleet. Okay, moving on to smaller craft. Here we've got a broadsword interceptor, a saber interceptor, and a longsword bomber. So looking at the interceptors first, um, they've both got 16 inches of movement. In case you're wondering, the um, the broadsword stats are outside of the brackets, and the sabers stats are those that are inside the brackets. So both types have 16 inches of movement, and the damage track is 2 for the broadsword, 3 for the saber, so the saber is slightly tougher. Neither have system loadouts, and they can only um, their weapons only target um, other wing targets, they can't target elements. Um, the range has to be in contact, have to be, they have to be in base-to-base -base contact with the, um, you know, with the element that they are attacking. And they throw 2 dice for the broadsword per token, and the saber throws 3 dice per token. Now you might wonder, why would you ever want to take a broadsword when the saber looks, you know, clearly better? And the answer to that is in the flight slots. The broadsword only takes up one flight slot, whereas the saber takes up two flight slots. So you might, you know, you won't be able to put as many um, sabers onto a ship as you will broadswords. However, that kind of, it kind of scales in either direction. So, you know, at lower um, hangar ratings, maybe taking sabers is a better idea. Whereas as you go up, the ratings, you know, as you go up the um, the hangar ratings, then maybe broadswords start to come into their own. And the reason for that is because you can take more broadswords than you know than you can take sabers on any given ship. Okay, moving on to the bombers. Um, the longsword bomber has a flight slot of one flight slot rating, so you can potentially, for example, on the epoch, you could take a, you know a flight, a wing, I should say, of six uh, longswords. The movement is sixteen inches. Um, the damage track is two. And there are no um, you know, there are no system loadouts on the longsword. For the weapons, they're actually better against elements than against wings. So you want to you know you want to get these guys onto attack runs um, because against elements they chuck two dice per token, and against um, other wing targets they only throw one dice per token. So you really want to send these guys on attack runs and you know not engage um, you know interceptors and other wing targets. Okay, let's move on now to boarding craft, which are the UNSC Pelican and Spartans on board a UNSC Pelican. So let's look at the Pelican first without Spartans. Um, it has a flight slot rating of zero because it's part of the boarding craft rating of larger ships, not hangars. Um, it has a movement of 12 inches, a damage track of four. So it's not as easy to take out as a, um, you know, like an interceptor or a, a bomber, but you know, all the same, it's only one number on the damage track. Um, it has a security detail of two and it has a system loadout uh, which says heroic save trooper. Now what this basically means is that if a pelican token would be destroyed You roll a halo dice and on the result of a two because it's trooper if you get a two result 
then the, that, you know, that token is not destroyed. Um, it doesn't have any weapons because it's meant to, you know, it's meant to be a purely a boarding craft. It's not meant to be any, you know, any, any sort of attack craft. Okay, so Spartans on board Pelicans. Um, these have a flight slot rating of zero because again, it's part of the boarding craft stat, not the hangar stat. Um, has movement of 12 inches, damage track of six because, because Spartans, and a security detail of five, again, because Spartans, because, you know, when the Spartans get on board a ship, they are going to wreck face. Um, the system loadouts are Assault Specialist and Heroic Save. So the Heroic Save Spartan um, works in much the same way as Heroic Save Trooper, in, but in this case, you need any result other than a skull, and the Spartan is not, you know, is not destroyed if it would otherwise be destroyed. Now, Assault Specialist, um, refers well it basically affects the boarding result table when you're doing you know a boarding um, assault and you can see the boarding result table here um, I'm not going to go into how boarding works just just in this video because this is meant, only meant to be like an overview of the you know the star set UNSC ships however I will say that because it's a soul specialist 2 whatever result you get on the boarding result table it would add 2 to that result so for example if you got 10 focus sabotage it would take it up to 12, T minus two minutes. So that's what the assault specialist um, affects, which you know makes sense because the Spartans are gonna get on board a ship and as I said earlier, they're gonna try to wreck face. Okay, finally, we're gonna take a look at this guy, Vice Admiral Michael Stanforth and his commander card and all the you know cool things that he can do to assist you. So we're not going to focus on the points cost, Spartans, each Spartan costs 100 points or anything like that, just, just for now. Because this is meant to be a basic overview. But we will look at the standard orders um, and the special orders and his unique ability. And actually, let's look at the unique ability first. Um, it says that he can re-roll, um, you know, if you have this guy as, you know, as part of your, as part of your fleet, you can re-roll two fleet order dice once per turn. So if, for example, you're really looking for shields and instead you get loads of lightnings, then you can take those two dice, re-roll them, and hopefully, you know, get whatever you need. In this case, two shields is, you know, a good result in this particular situation. So, um, standard orders. Focus attack, which costs one lightning. So basically, um, you know, after you've rolled an attack, um, you can spend a lightning to re-roll any two attack dice. Brace, brace, brace is a really useful ability. Um, you spend a shield before your opponent rolls their attack dice and any successes they get is reduced by two. Form up lets you take um, an element that is, you know, maybe, you know, the last standing member of its, you know, of its battle group and form it up with another battle group to get it back into fighting strength. Okay, so special orders um, are all based on boarding for this guy. So prepare for borders um, is a defensive um, special order. Increase the security detail um, present on board a single friendly enemy cattle element by plus four for this turn. Um, and three lightning, take it to them. Um, increase the attack dice of each friendly security detail on board an enemy element by two. So his special orders are all about boarding and trying to increase the effects of boarding in your favor. Okay, so that was a closer look at the UNSC fleet from the Fall of Reach starter set. As always, leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down on this video depending on how you felt about it, and be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with new videos on this channel and to support the channel as well. Also, do be sure to check out Fleet Signal on social media and fleetsignal.com as well. Okay, that's all for now. Until next time, see ya!